Okay, we're talking about analgesics. So analgesics are pain relievers. That's it, just pain relievers. Um, so when we say that, there can be different types of pain relievers. They can be local or systemic. Can you think of an example of a local analgesic? That's right. You can think of maybe a pain cream that you rub on, or how about a lidoderm patch? Those would be local analgesics. Or they can be systemic, like a Tylenol. Something you swallow goes through your bloodstream to the site of action and works. They can be narcotics, such as an opiate, a narcotic, or it can be a non-narcotic, like an ibuprofen or a Tylenol. Or it can be a mix. When I talk about mixed, these are analgesics that are part narcotic and part not narcotic, such as a Norco or the old Lortab or the Percocet. These are mixed, and if you look at the way they're written, they're written as in a fraction. So you might see something that would be 5, 325, something like that. If you have an um, opiate or a mixed drug, an analgesic that is written like that, that is telling you there's two active ingredients. The top number is going to be your opiate, okay? And the bottom would be your non-opiate. So if it's like a Percocet, then it would be an um, acetaminophen, which would be generic for Tylenol. Um, if it's a Percodan, then that, that bottom number is going to be aspirin. So set is your Tylenol or acetaminophen, and Dan is your aspirin. The top number um, can vary. It might be 5, it might be 7.5, it might be 10, um, sometimes even 15. Um, it goes on. But lots of times you're going to see them written like that and be aware that this bottom number is probably going to be your acetaminophen. Why is that important? Number one, you got to make sure you get the right one. Huge difference between a 5 and a 10, right? Double the strength. The other thing about it is you have to watch your amount of acetaminophen because it has a very low ceiling. That means you can only give so much, and if you give over that, you better throw on some onions because we're cooking up some liver. It's very damaging to the liver. So we must be careful because acetaminophen, your Tylenol is going to be in so many different meds. Perhaps they're already getting a Tylenol three times a day right, for their, for their chronic pain they've had. Then perhaps they fell and went to the ER and came right back. Nothing was broke, but oh boy, she bruised up. And they gave her some meds for that pain, which happens to be an opiate combo. And so you have with the rest of your acetaminophen level to make sure they stay under. That number is going to vary depending on that patient. So if you have someone who is healthy and well and no other meds, they may be able to take three or even maybe even 4,000 milligrams in a 24-hour period as long as they don't drink any alcohol. Then if you have people who have other meds that compete in the liver, that ceiling's going to get lower. If you have someone who has a liver that's not quite pristine, whether it be age-related or disease-related, that level, that ceiling, that top number that they can um, tolerate is going down, down, down to sometimes even 2,000 or 1,500 milligrams a day. That still might seem a lot for you, but if they're taking 500 milligram arthritis strength Tylenol twice a day and then you add a couple of these in a day, do you see you're already over or right at a limit? Can you see how that would be? Because a lot of these are written PRN. If they get an injury or come back from the hospital with a surgery or something. Of course, nowadays we're having all kinds of issues with um, op the opiate epidemic. And um, I think there's enough blame to go around. And it'll be interesting to see how this comes out.
<clears throat> but um, nonetheless, pain is still real, and you will, these drugs are still out there, and um, we still have to be very careful. Always, your opiates will have to be in a locked cabinet, double locked. So if your med card is locked, they need to be in a locked part and double locked. So the med card's locked, and then they're in an extra locked drawer. Double locked, and you have to sign out every time you give it. The time, the date, who did it, follow up, all that has to be on there if it's PRN. Okay, all your opiates must be accounted for at all times. All right, um, so the next thing is antipyretic. This holds down fever, pyro, fire, pyretics, pyrotechnics. We're talking about fire, so we're talking about fever. So these take fever down. And a lot of your analgesics are also your antipyretics. Okay, not all of them but most of them are. Anti-inflammatory, a lot of your analgesics are also anti-inflammatory, but not all. Acetaminophen, Tylenol is not an anti-inflammatory. A lot of your anti-inflammatories are NSAIDs. Non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. So remember, steroids own anti-inflammation. Anti they, they are anti-inflammatory drugs. But these other drugs, such as ibuprofen and naproxen um, and so forth, even aspirin is considered an NSAID. However, aspirin is not a reactor when it comes to the increase of heart attack and stroke that your um, ibuprofen and um, so forth are. So um, NSAIDs are your anti-inflammatory, and Tylenol acetaminophen is not one of them. Okay. Um, also, I just want to take a minute and talk just a little bit about your topical systemic analgesic opiate. By this, I am talking about your duragesic patches, if you know what I'm talking about, your fentanyl patches. They're little tiny clear patches that have to go over a fat pad. You must have at least a quarter inch of fat because the way it works is that drug, and it's a very strong opiate, goes right through the skin into the fat and then slowly goes from the fat into the bloodstream. And it lasts three days. So it's important that you put it over a fat pad. And if you say, but Diane, there is no fat on this person. Well, then it's an inappropriate drug for that person. And you need to get the physician, work with the nurse and the physician to get a different route, a different med, something different because it's not appropriate for someone without any fat to be on a topical fentanyl patch. Also saying that, make darn sure you wear gloves when you put it on and take it off. Remember that drug is designed to go right through the skin, right? So you could have a bad drug test if, you know, there's all these random drug tests. They're very sensitive now and that could show up. Just be very careful. Always wear gloves when you take on or take off, put on or take off any topical med, okay? Um, also dispose of it correctly. Usually most places want it to go in a special, whether it's um, the red box, you know, as, as far as a sharps container, or some facilities will have you do something special with appropriate just to throw them in the regular trash. Okay. Um, and remember, the fentanyl patch needs to go in the trunk, this area of good circulation, because it is systemic. It goes into the bloodstream, goes around the body, so you put it in this area, regardless if it's the big toe or wet or what, right? Um, whereas a duragesic patch, um, that's your, excuse me, your lidoderm patch, um, you would put wherever it hurts. If your knee hurts, you'd put it on your knee. 
that type of thing. Okay, so that's the difference between your local and your systemic narcotic and non-narcotic. The um, lidoderm would be a non-narcotic um, analgesic patch. Okay, all right, so hope that uh, cleared things up for you as regard to our analgesics, which are our pain relievers.